Welcome to the Marig Experience, and today we have a really, really special guest. Um, he takes care of a lot of the things that go on behind the scenes. As you guys have heard, um, we represent here at Marig, we represent a local builder, a top local builder. Um, and this gentleman that's that we're about to introduce is, is um, well, from what he just told us, the new operations manager for Point Homes. Carlos Renteria. Yes, sir. Good afternoon, Carlos. Good afternoon, How's Mario. How's it going? Thank you. Good, good. Thank you for having me here. Yes, yeah. sir. Tell us a little bit about that little piece of paper that you have right there. I know it was kind of breaking news that you were digesting, and I went, I grabbed you, and and uh, you just broke some news on here, which is that you are the new operations manager for Point Homes. Yeah, technically, I mean, it's just, it just news to me, too. I guess the title, they, they just emailed me at the new operations manager, I guess, um, pre-construction, uh, the pre-construction phase of Point Homes. Okay. So, yeah. so when I say that you are someone who does a lot of the, the back end of it and, and you're behind the scenes as the operations manager... What, what are some of the roles that an, an operations manager takes on at a builder? I mean, let me start off with how many houses a year do you build? Uh, right now, we're, what, over the 100 mark? I'm not sure how much we did last year, to be honest. I know it was over 120. You would be, mm -hmm. you would be the one to confirm that, but yeah. yeah. Okay. So over 100 houses that you're overseeing at any given time. Um, is it just houses or do you have other projects that you're overseeing within this uh, big construction builder? Yeah, actually, I mean, it's, it's a whole team of us, right? It's just not mm -hmm. me. So, so we, 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 we separate it into, into teams. Right now, it's not only houses that we're doing. We're, do, we're actually starting some uh, commercial apartments, some townhomes that I'm, uh, I'm specifically assigned to getting them off the ground and, and running them so so it's just not houses it's not it's townhomes apartments and you know carlos villalobos his his vision is going 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 to bigger projects so and it's just not me like i said so the whole team of us that are mm -hmm. yeah are definitely i mean it's it takes a it takes a what does it say it takes a village right yes, um it takes a village to run a, a something of this magnitude you know, um, at any given point, and, and earlier you said that we talk about, like, I'm, I'm more of the person that can give you the specifics, mm -hmm. but from what I know right now, we have about 170 homes under production. So that's anywhere between the permit stage, right. which is when, what, what, what is the permit stage, if, if you can oh, the elaborate permit, a little yeah. bit on that? Uh, the, the, the way the process is, is uh, once the, the president selects the lots and he goes... He says, this is how much I want to start. So we, my, my role is to jump into the permit stages, preparing plans. Uh, of course, all, all of our plans, most of our plans are already drawn. So the permit stage, it takes uh, uh, getting, uh, per, uh, getting plans ready for submittals to the city, to several uh, municipalities, you know, City of Paso, Socorro, Horizon, you name it, the county, mm -hmm. and uh, not not only that, we gotta we gotta check setbacks, we gotta check covenants. Uh, every subdivision, every every developer has its own demands and covenants that we need to abide by. So, so it takes a, it takes a while to to it takes a little bit of work to get those those plants in permitting stage. Okay, so once you're in the permitting stage and and you move pass let's say all the municipalities give you the green stamp mm -hmm. and and you're ready to go what is the very first step when it comes to building a, a home when it comes to building a house even even right after we have the permits uh, we we try to make sure that our pads are are taken care of i mean we, you can't build a a house, a foundation upon loose soils and all that. So okay. before we even release plants and we start setting forms, we got to make sure that our engineer, soils engineers have been out there, looked at the lots and told us what the soils look like. So okay. sometimes sometimes we get bad soils that we have to remediate or 
remove bad soil, clay, and, and bring in nice, good engineered soil before we can even start. So from permit stage to sometimes where we, when we get to break ground, it could be a month, a month and a half, two months, depending mm-hmm. on, on little things like that. And that's, that's the preparation. And, and for our audience that may not know what a pad is or what engineered soil, what you're, what you're telling us is maybe we, do we, do we do a soils test? Do we make sure that our soils basically where we're building our homes are we making sure that we're building on strong foundations? That's basically what you're telling me? On strong soil. I mean, yes, a lot of people might think that the bigger the foundation, the, the thicker the concrete or the bigger the rebar is, is what's going to keep the house from sinking. And it's really, it's really not. It's really what holds the, the foundation up. You know, so yes, it's the dirt where your foundation is set. Mm-hmm. Okay, yes. so the dirt where your foundation is set. So right from the get-go... Point Homes is already taking extra steps to ensure that the house is built on good soil, good grounds, strong foundation um, after the foundation. So you pour a slab or you pour the cement as most people know it, um, and then you build up your frame, I'm assuming, right? Correct, yeah. Okay. Well, based on the soil uh, condition, the engineer would uh, recommend the, the foundation design. Sometimes they go deeper footings, bigger footings. Sometimes they, they go with shallower footings. So, so yes, once the foundation is designed, because that's designed by an engineer too, mm-hmm. according to the soils, then, then we start building our, our frame, of course. Okay, cool, cool. And throughout this overseeing process, are you out in the field a lot? Do you, you I'm assuming you have to be, you have an, like you said, we, you, we run a, an army of, foremen and uh, people on the ground how often do you go out to the field to spot check some of the work sites or most of the work sites how often does that happen i I myself don't do it regularly as i used to before our team got bigger stronger Mm -hmm. Uh, but we do have people in charge of specific tasks we do have checklists Mm -hmm. uh, for specific uh, tasks again uh, so, but we, we do check every time, uh, every, uh, for example, if we're doing the, the, the remediation of the soil, we, we raise a foot of, of good soil, compact it, test, then pour in some more dirt, compact it, test. And, and you, so there's, there's several times we have checklists that, that the foreman and our production manager out there needs to need to go off of and make sure that we're keeping those things done, those tasks done. Okay. Prior to being, how long have you been at Point Homes? Um, I'm going to, it's a little bit over 11 years already. Okay. 11 years. Yeah. Cool. If you want to get a little bit closer, just a little bit closer, because I want to make sure that the audio is catching you. So you've been at Point mm-hmm. Homes for a little bit over 11 years. Um, before that, what did you do? What, what were you doing or, or what was your career before that? So my, my background uh, ever, I mean, I'm going to go back to, to childhood, I guess my, my dad was in in construction, electrician, and uh, I've been I've been in construction for forever, pretty much. Okay. Uh, out of high school, I went into the drafting and design program at NMSU. Okay. I, I wanted to become an architect, but then uh, uh, as I finished my associates, then I got hired. It was a good paying job, and I said I put a, I put off my education for the money, the good money. Uh, but ever since that, then I got hired uh, for a better job, to a net better job, better paying, and, and I've been, you know, I've been doing this. Uh, out of college, I started my own business. I used to, I used to do drafting and design. Uh, I worked, I did a lot of plans for Carefree Homes, Saratoga Homes, Cisco Homes. Make sure I you did, bleep that out. Uh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I did uh, Desert View Homes. Uh, you know, I've been... I've been doing plants pretty much all my life. So uh, one of my, be- then, then I, I met Carlos Villalobos, the, the president of Point Homes. Um, at the time, I mean, I think I, I worked for him for about two years. He was my client. And, and then he came in with a, with a good offer to come aboard and join Point Homes. So it's been about 11 years since okay in, so you were doing kind of contract work for carlos villalobos yes. and other builders at the same time yeah okay yeah. so carlos villalobos would go to my office to my business and 
and you know check on his work how we were doing and you know i guess he liked our work he liked the way i worked so he had to he 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 asked me to come work for point homes okay cool i mean that's definitely a, a big step right going from being a, an entrepreneur to to going so that's what i'm i guess what i'm trying the words i'm trying to find is you were really you took a leap of faith right and um you decided that this particular company might be going in the right direction and something that you wanted to be a part of, right? Yeah, you know, I had uh, throughout my years, even while working at Point Homes, I had several people, many people telling me to go into business with them, partners, uh, some people with money, some people wanted to start building, you know. Uh, so so I've had several offers on the table, and uh, but when... When I saw Point Holmes' product and and his dedication, I, I kind of I kind of thought it was a good move. I mean, you always want to be your own boss. You have your own business. You grow and 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 thank God for my wife and family. They've always been supportive. And you kind of drag them along the way because your 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 dreamy your dream is to have a successful business. But then. When Carlos came along, I, I really saw the, the product that Point Homes had, and, and I liked it. I really thought it was a strong company to come and work for, even though at that time he w it was only him and maybe an accountant and two more people. So I, I, I really believed in his vision, his story, and I, I said, like, I think, it's, I think I'll achieve my, my goals faster if I go that route, then, then, you know, sticking out with, with what I was doing at the time. Yeah. I mean, and, and that's definitely a, a good, a, a good way to see it. Right. Um, a couple of things and, and you and I follow each other on, on social media. Mm -hmm. And I know two things that I see outside of the Carlos Renteria operations manager. Right. Um, one of them is that you're a man of faith, you know, so, you're, you're very dedicated to your, to your church. We actually did did something for you at the church um, not too long ago, a little expansion, mm -hmm. and then you also have a, quite an extensive gun collection, sure. right? Yeah. Tell us a little bit what, about those two. I mean, one of them is a hobby, and the other one is is true dedication. Tell us a little bit more about that. Well, I've I've always been, uh, I've always tried to be a, a, a connected to to God. You know, to um, there's been cases instances where you're like. You have a new car, you have this, you have that, and of course I'm not rich, but then you still feel that, that, that there's something else. So my connection, my strength, my dedication to work and, and to the company, I mean, it's got a, it, it comes from, from God, my, my values and all that stuff. Uh, and yes, I'm a big, a big uh, uh, I, I like guns, I like shooting, I, like, I love to take my kids out to the range sometimes and and you know, as as a hobby, it distresses me. I mean, construction yeah. construction is stressful. It's it's super fun, but it's super stressful, and I enjoy it. So, yeah, shooting guns, going to church. That's what's pretty much kept me kept me going. <laughs> kept you aligned, right? Kept me aligned. And then also recently, you had a you had a baby, uh, um, a not you, a granddaughter, uh, your grandfather, right? Yeah. I yeah, just became a grandfather last last year actually. How's that experience? How's uh you know balancing grandpa life it's, and 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 this type of stressful work life? No, it's beautiful. It's a different feeling. I I had I I have four boys, all boys, and I had never had a a daughter. A daughter. I never had a daughter. I never had a grandpa. So or I never met my grandpa spare my granddad's I guess mm -hmm. so this this new thing with my granddaughter is something something different it's, yeah it's, it's outrageous does I mean, she have you wrapped her on your her eh, pinky yeah I, I much won't, huh? I won't admit it admit it to them but yeah <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah going going back to <clears throat> a little bit about the construction process um, I know that we have some uh, quality control measures once a house is complete um, and it's getting ready to be turned into a client. Tell, tell me a little bit more about those quality control measures. What is it that we do are, that we go above and beyond to ensure that the client gets a great quality product? But, because for us, as, you men, as we mentioned earlier, it's 
150 homes in production at any given time, yeah. right? And closings for us. But for people that are purchasing their home, you know, um, they, they say the, the number one um, most loved word in the English dictionary is in the English language is mm -hmm. mom. But the number two is home, right? So for some people that are actually buying their, their forever home or their first sure. home ever, what are some of the extra quality measures that Point Homes takes and you as the operations manager have put in place along with your team to ensure that the client is getting a quality home? Quality home. So, so that quality home that we try to build for, for families, you know, every time we build a house or I see a house that we're building, I think about the family that's going to live there. And, you know, you think about your own family, your boys, your granddaughter or whomever that and you want to build a nice house. So even before we start the design, I mean, the, we, we're, we're starting to look at cost efficient, energy efficient homes. So, so that's one thing that we're always thinking about the, the, the homeowner uh, saving a little bit on energy and having a more comfortable home. Uh, although most clients will not see the insulation in between the walls, I mean, we do look at that. Mm -hmm. We do see that that's going to be a benefit uh, for the client, for the buyer. I mean, we do have a quality control specialist that, that although um, we have checklists, the foreman checks quality. Uh, our production manager is out there checking the quality in the work. Uh, and then we have a quality control specialist that does a, a pre walkthrough before the clients even walk the house. So that's Roy, correct? That's Roy. That's okay. Roy. Roy. Roy will walk the house, will mark the walls, will, you know, sometimes he comes in with a, a big list and, and or a small list and he sometimes asks me, what do you think about that? What do you think about that? And, and then things that a lot of people might not care, but there's things that a lot of people might care. You know, it's just because you live a certain lifestyle outside in your house, you, you, you're you used to seeing, and, and excuse me for going, you're used to seeing little, a defect on your house, and you see it all the time that it becomes normal. And then you see it on another house, and to you it might be normal, and it's like, no, Roy, let's let's go ahead and mark it up, you know, because that might be normal to us, but it looks weird, you know. So yeah. we, we, we always try to think on, on the client, how the client is going to view things and how the house will, will function. I mean, mm -hmm. yep. And then something that we recently started implementing as well is we do a, a third party private inspection, correct, yeah. with every yeah. single one of our homes? Yeah, yeah, we do. We, we've uh, outsourced the private inspection uh, it's a, an independent company, company, private inspectors. They don't work. Uh, we do pay them, but they don't, they're not uh, coerced or they're not, we don't tell them what to look for. They give us their, their professional opinion and uh, they mark up our houses. They, they say, this is deficient, this is not right, you know, and we, we go ahead and change it. Although sometimes, uh, even if it's code or if it's not code, if it's good for the family and it's doable, we, we go ahead and take care of it, yeah. Okay, so before a client even does what, what you're calling their, their walkthrough, right? Mm -hmm. Their blue tape walkthrough, we've gone over a process, uh, well, I'm gonna call it a set of eyes, right? We've gone over the, the foreman's set of eyes. We've gone over our quality control set of eyes. We've gone over our private inspections set of eyes and, and codes, regulations. Um, and then it finally gets to the client for their walkthrough. Am I correct? Correct. So yes. the client goes at one screen after another screen after another screen to finally they get to see their home. And even then, well, what I tell my clients all the time is, there's not going to be a perfect home, mm -hmm. you know. Um, we can come here and walk the house five times, and and regardless of the builder, whether it's a new home or an old home, things like that, we walk it five times, and five times you're going to find something different on it, you know. And we're all building with similar standards, similar codes, um, but I do believe that all those additional set of eyes minimize the. Uh, the errors that a client is going to see once they get to their to their um, final walkthrough through their blue tape walkthrough. Am I correct? Yeah. That, that have you seen that smoothen the process? How does that? How has that particular process helped you as an operations manager to have all of these 
firewalls between the house being completed and the house actually being turned into the client. Yeah, you know, I've seen a good turnout uh, from when we first started, when, from when I first started with Point Homes. Like I said, it was only a few of us. And, and the houses we built back then to the houses we build right now, they, they have as many parts, you know, and it's just right now we have so much more people looking at them then like if, like I said, the foreman, he's so used to seeing that house as he's building it that any a, a little dent on the wall, a little something scrape or here and there to him might be normal now because he's used to walking that house and and the process, that process that we're talking about of at least five people looking at that house before we turn it into the client, it just eliminates a lot of those little Un- unknowns and, and, and things that we miss that somebody could miss, you know? Yeah, so. definitely. Do you personally have a lot of um, face-to-face interaction with the client or are you involved once there's there's been certain situations or certain points that, that other people maybe are not able to, to work on yeah. or don't have the expertise? How often do you particularly speak with a client in yeah. terms of, uh, of uh, warranties or completions or things like that? Yeah, not, not anymore. I used to, back in the day, talk to several of them. Not anymore. I mean, uh, Roy, who's our quality control specialist, he's pretty good at, at uh, answering questions. We have Richard, our warranties uh, specialist, too. I mean, he leads the people in the right direction, right questions, right answers. So I, I, I'll only talk to clients once they, they get technical in their questioning, foundation, structures, codes, and things like that, or they, they just really, which is very rarely that they don't want to talk to or, 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 or Roy or Richard, but uh, I, I don't get to talk to the homeowners that much anymore. I mean, we, we have it pretty good set up. Yeah. I mean, that, that's definitely good having, you know, the different departments handling different things on your behalf and, and you as the operations manager uh, for Point Homes. Now, if I am a consumer off the street and I am looking to purchase a new home, why should I buy a Point Home in your opinion? Um, I, I, can, I can tell you out of... I, out of my own experience, like I said, I, I, I believe in our product. I, I know that our, our heart, our, our passion, and our dedication is behind our houses. I know that we're not out there trying to make a, an extra buck. You know, it, it, it is a business, but we're not trying to hide things from the, the owner. We're not trying, if, if, it's, if it's code, we'll do it. And if it's a little bit more and beyond, we'll do it. I mean, Carlos Villalobos, the president, the owner of Point Homes, has never has never said, don't do it because I, I want to make more money out of that house. If, if, he's always been the opposite. If it's going to make the house perform better, the family be better, and it's not going to break the bank or, you know, uh, he's always been pro, pro the house, pro the families, pro the clients. Yeah, so that's definitely what, what you're saying is, we don't necessarily cut corners. We right. don't take any shortcuts here right. at Point Homes. We we ensure that when you purchase a home, mo- most of, of the people purchasing a home are purchasing it for the next 30 years, yeah. you know, as their mortgage is going to be for 30 years, that we we try to, to make sure that their product is the most enjoyable for those 30 years. Am I correct? Yeah, that's that's right. And, and a personal experience of mine, and I don't mean to brag, but... I bought a Point Homes maybe about eight years ago. Okay. Uh, from the day that I closed on that house, uh, within a month, I, I had it up for lease. I have not gone into that house, but maybe twice. Mm-hmm. Twice. And the, way, the, the reason I'm saying this, issues with electrical, roof, mechanical, and those things, I have never had to, yeah. you know, be, be going to that house to... So I, that's why I recommend a point home a personal experience. I've never had to do anything to that house. So. And, and it's funny you say that because I personally own a couple of point homes. Mm-hmm. And, and I also own homes from some of these other builders mm-hmm. that I lease out as well. Yeah. And my point homes clients and, and, of course, people watching this are going to say, of course, you're going to say point homes. Sure. You're the listing agent for them. Right. But as a landlord, yeah. you know, for my investments... 
My clients that live in point homes mm -hmm. are the ones that complain the least. the least. I have some other builders that, hey, post, I have a leak here. I have yeah. a rock wall that this happened. Yeah. My, and, and I get it, wear and tear, things like that. But my clients that live or my, my tenants that live in the point homes that I own mm -hmm. are happier. Yep. Less complaints. And, and it's funny that it's great, not funny that you said it because it's not just me yeah. saying it anymore you know it's it's someone that is in that same position where you bought the home your tenants and you've been there a couple of times maybe yeah. because as you said earlier these houses perform great yeah. you know when you're looking for a house to perform you're looking for it to not have you know not too much maintenance your, your regular wear and tear mm -hmm. but not having to you know, yeah. go through plumbing. Yeah, my, my tenants, they, they've offered to buy it. I mm -hmm. mean, they've, they've said, like, if you ever want to sell it, please sell it. We love our house. We love our house. And, of course, I tell them that that is your house. That is your house. Yeah, you for know, now. So. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but anyways, yes. I mean, Renteria, and I call you Renteria, but Carlos Renteria, um, Point Homes Production Operations Manager as of 2 p.m. today. Congratulations on your new job. Thank you so much for giving us a little bit of your time today. Um, if you have uh, anything that you would like to say to the El Paso community, now's your time. Go ahead. Yeah, well, thank you. Thank you for having me, uh, El Paso community. I mean, if you're looking for a house, I mean, I personally, out of, out of experience and out of the passion and uh, the work and the thought that goes into our houses, I truly recommend a point homes. Like I said, I worked for, a, I, I've done designs for other builders. I've personally met other builders and Point Homes was uh, for me the, the, the best choice to, to work for because I believed in, in the product. I mean, usually your name, your name, if it's got value, it's got a, a you, you back up something that's got value, it, it will add value to your name. So by all means, Point Homes is, is the one to, to do it. Thank you, Charles. I appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mario.